Hi there, and welcome back. Our awesome God is so powerful and amazing, and one thing that we can be thankful for is that He invites us to know Him through His Word. So, welcome to day number 88. Today we read Numbers 32, Psalm 45, and our first reading in Acts 5. Turning to Numbers 32, yesterday we heard of the conquest of the Midianite people. That story is an example of how hard it is for us humans to follow God's instructions. Numbers 32 The tribes of Reuben and Gad had a lot of livestock. When they saw how suitable the land of Jazer and Gilead was for cattle, they went to Moses, Eleazar, and the other leaders of the community and said, This region which the Lord has helped the Israelites occupy, the towns of Ataroth, Dibon, Jazer, Nimra, Heshbon, Eleale, Sibma, Nebo, and Baon, is good land for livestock, and we have so much livestock. Please give us this land as our property, and do not make us cross the Jordan River and settle there. Moses replied, Do you want to stay here while the other Israelites go to war? How dare you try to discourage the people of Israel from crossing the Jordan into the land which the Lord has given them? That is what your fathers did when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. They went as far as Eshkol Valley and saw the land, but when they returned, they discouraged the people from entering the land which the Lord had given them. The Lord became angry that day and made a promise. I swear that because they did not remain loyal to me, none of the men twenty years old or older who came out of Egypt will enter the land that I promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob." This included everyone except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, and Joshua, son of Nun. They remained loyal to the Lord. The Lord became angry with the people and made them wander in the wilderness forty years until that whole generation that had displeased him was dead. And now you have taken your ancestors' place, a new generation of sinful people ready to bring down the fierce anger of the Lord on Israel again. If you people of Reuben and Gad refuse to follow him now, he will once again abandon all these people in the wilderness, and you will be responsible for their destruction. They approached Moses and said, First allow us to build stone enclosures here for our sheep and fortified towns for our dependents. Then we will be ready to go with the other Israelites into battle and lead the attack until we have settled them in the land that will be theirs. In the meantime, our dependents can live here in the fortified towns, safe from the people of this land. We will not return to our homes until all the other Israelites have taken possession of the land assigned to them. We will not take possession of any property among them on the other side of the Jordan, because we have received our share here east of the Jordan. Moses answered, If you really mean what you say, then here in the presence of the Lord get ready to go into battle. All your fighting men are to cross the Jordan, and under the command of the Lord they are to attack our enemies until the Lord defeats them and takes possession of the land. After that you may return, because you will have fulfilled your obligation to the Lord and to the other Israelites. Then the Lord will acknowledge that this land east of the Jordan is yours." But if you do not keep your promise, I warn you that you will be sinning against the Lord. Make no mistake about it. You will be punished for your sin. So build your towns and the enclosures for your sheep, but do what you have promised. The men of Gad and Reuben said, Sir, we will do as you command. Our wives and children and our cattle and sheep will remain here in the towns of Gilead. 
but all of us are ready to go into battle under the Lord's command. We will cross the Jordan and fight, just as you have said. So Moses gave these commands to Eleazar, Joshua, and the other leaders of Israel. If the men of Gad and Reuben cross the Jordan ready for battle at the Lord's command, and if with their help you are able to conquer the land, then give them the land of Gilead as their property. But if they do not cross the Jordan and go into battle with you, they are to receive their share of the property in the land of Canaan as you do. The men of Gad and Reuben answered, Sir, we will do as the Lord has commanded. Under his command we will cross into the land of Canaan and go into battle, so that we can retain our property here east of the Jordan. So Moses assigned the tribes of Gad and Reuben and the half-tribe of Manasseh, all the territory of King Sihon of the Amorites and King Og of Bashan, including the towns and the country around them. The tribe of Gad rebuilt the fortified towns of Dibon, Ataroth, Arorur, Atroth Shofan, Jazer, Jogbeha, Beth Nimra, and Beth Haran. The tribe of Reuben rebuilt Heshbon, Eliale, Kiriathaim, Nebo, Baalmeon, this name was changed, and Sibma. They gave new names to the towns they rebuilt. The clan of Machir, son of Manasseh, invaded the land of Gilead, occupied it, and drove out the Amorites who were there. So Moses gave Gilead to the clan of Machir, and they lived there. Jair, of the tribe of Manasseh, attacked and captured some villages and named them villages of Jair. Noba attacked and captured Kenoth and its villages, and he renamed it Noba after himself. We turn now to Psalm 45. This psalm may have originally been intended as a wedding song for King Solomon. But from our vantage point, we can see that it is really a song of praise to our king, the Messiah, and we, the people of God, are the bride. The Hebrew title is A Poem by the Clan of Korah, A Love Song. Psalm 45 Beautiful words fill my mind as I compose this song for the king. Like the pen of a good writer, my tongue is ready with a poem. You are the most handsome of men. You are an eloquent speaker. God has always blessed you. Buckle on your sword, mighty king. You are glorious and majestic. Ride on in majesty to victory for the defense of truth and justice. Your strength will win you great victories. Your arrows are sharp. They pierce the hearts of your enemies. Nations fall down at your feet. The kingdom that God has given you will last forever and ever. You rule over your people with justice. You love what is right and hate what is evil. That is why God, your God, has chosen you and has poured out more happiness on you than on any other king. The perfume of myrrh and aloes is on your clothes. Musicians entertain you in palaces decorated with ivory. Among the women of your court are daughters of kings, and at the right of your throne stands the queen wearing ornaments of finest gold. Bride of the king, listen to what I say. Forget your people and your relatives. Your beauty will make the king desire you. He is your master, so you must obey him. The people of Tyre will bring you gifts. Rich people will try to win your favor. The princess is in the palace. How beautiful she is! 
Her gown is made of gold thread. In her beautiful crown she is led to the king, followed by her bridesmaids, and they also are brought to him. With joy and gladness they come and enter the king's palace. You, my king, will have many sons to succeed your ancestors as kings. You will make them rulers over the whole earth. My song will keep your fame alive, and everyone will praise you for all time to come. Let's turn to Acts 5. Yesterday we heard of the fearless praying of the believers after being commanded to no longer teach about Jesus, and we heard of the wonderful unity of spirit among them. Acts 5. But there was a man named Ananias, who with his wife Sapphira sold some property that belonged to them. But with his wife's agreement he kept part of the money for himself and turned the rest over to the apostles. Peter said to him, Ananias, why did you let Satan take control of your heart and make you lie to the Holy Spirit by keeping part of the money you received for the property? Before you sold the property, it belonged to you, and after you sold it, the money was yours. Why, then, did you decide to do such a thing? You have not lied to people. You have lied to God. As soon as Ananias heard this, he fell down dead, and all who heard about it were terrified. The young men came in, wrapped up his body, carried him out, and buried him. About three hours later, his wife, not knowing what had happened, came in. Peter asked her, Tell me, was this the full amount you and your husband received for your property? She answered, Yes, the full amount. So Peter said to her, Why did you and your husband decide to put the Lord's Spirit to the test? The men who buried your husband are at the door right now, and they will carry you out, too. At once she fell down at his feet and died. The young men came in and saw that she was dead, so they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. The whole church and all the others who heard of this were terrified. Miracles and wonders were being performed among the people by the apostles. All the believers met together in Solomon's porch. Nobody outside the group dared join them, even though the people spoke highly of them. But more and more people were added to the group, a crowd of men and women who believed in the Lord. As a result of what the apostles were doing, sick people were carried out into the streets and placed on beds and mats, so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. And crowds of people came in from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing those who were sick or who had evil spirits in them, and they were all healed. Then the high priest and all his companions, members of the local party of the Sadducees, became extremely jealous of the apostles, so they decided to take action. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But that night an angel of the Lord opened the prison gates, led the apostles out, and said to them, "'Go and stand in the temple, and tell the people about this new life.'" The apostles obeyed, and at dawn they entered the temple and started teaching. The high priest and his companions called together all the Jewish elders for a full meeting of the council. Then they sent orders to the prison to have the apostles brought before them. Let's pray together. Our awesome and holy God, Please have mercy on us. We read in yesterday's psalm, Psalm 44, 
If we had stopped worshiping our God and prayed to a foreign God, you surely would have discovered it, because you know our secret thoughts. That was clearly proved to us today, Lord. You know our secret thoughts. And we see in Peter's words that this doesn't just come from ourselves. Ananias had let Satan take control of his heart. Lord, help us to be aware when Satan is tempting us. Please keep us from allowing him to take control of our hearts. Ananias had lied. In the midst of that time where there was such unity and joy and your power was being displayed, he thought he could lie to the Holy Spirit. And there's another verse. Just after Hebrews 4 talks about your word, the writer there says of you, Lord God, there is nothing that can be hid from you. Everything in all creation is exposed and lies open before your eyes. And it is to you that we must give an account of ourselves. Lord, we thank you that through Jesus and only through him can we hope to be able to come before you and not be destroyed. Lord, we open our whole heart to you now. We ask you to clean us in every area. Help us to take action step by step to please you, starting today.